Well, I didn't mean for this project to go on for so long. It's amazing that it's still dragging on and dragging on. You know, but then summer finally hit, and I have a lot of other things going on. Actually, spring and then summer. And that slowed a lot of things down for me. But anyway, as you can see, the old halo light uh, is not lit up and it is not playing. And there's a reason for that. I mean, it does play. Don't get me wrong. It plays well. But it does have a glitch. And you may or may not have seen it in the last video where I turned it on. We put the riflemen up there. So, just in case you missed it, here it is. This is uh, from the last Halo Light video we put up, part 16. Some of you may not have noticed it. Of course, I noticed it before I even made the video. And Brendan, of course, watched the video. And he said, yep, I saw it. You're exactly right. Let me show you what I'm talking about, what this flaw is. Right there. See how it's all uh, washed out on the left-hand side of the screen? And there's a bunch of horizontal lines going there. I don't know if you can make them out very well. Let me try to zoom in and see if you can see some of them. Yeah, you can see those horizontal weird lines right there, okay? Well, Brendan, uh, he said, you know, I've said, I have to rely on Brendan for this sort of thing completely, 100%, because I have no idea what would cause this. No idea at all. And so he said he had seen it once before, and he believes that he hit the books, looked it up, came back with an email to me, and he said, yep, he said, I think what's causing that is, is it's called ringing. And uh, what can cause it is the horizontal output tube is weak, bad damper tube, your flyback transformer could be causing it, which I hope not, because if that's the way it is, it's going to stay like that, because I don't have another flyback for it. And he said, or it could be uh, there is a damping setup for this sort of thing in the horizontal yoke itself. It's a capacitor and a, uh, a resistor. So what, and, uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to check every one of these things out. We're going to check each of the tubes, you know, the damper and the, and the horizontal uh, output tube. And we're also going to check the capacitor and the resistor in that yoke. We're going to eliminate as much as we can to try to get this thing fixed. However, if it winds up being the uh, flyback transformer, it's just going to have to stay like that. Anyway, here's the damper tube. It's the 6AX4. We'll go ahead and run that baby across the tube tester and one more time. I've already run it once. This time I'll be a little more critical about what I what I do. And here's the 6BQ6, which is what was you know the schematic calls for. But I have a 6CD6 in there. And over here in the windings, let me back up here a little bit. This is the uh, deflection yoke that you find on the back of the picture tube on the neck. And right here you'll see we've got a couple of resistors. We've got a, in one of the windings we have a 560 ohm resistor. In one of the other windings we have another 560 ohm resistor. And on a third winding we have a... Uh, what is that a 56 hard to read that stuff actually it looks like a 56 pika farad 2000 volt capacitor which is that one right there then we have a 1k resistor now the resistor i tested it, it, it's really good but we're going to go ahead and disconnect one end of this capacitor and we're going to go ahead and test it now i tested it with my multimeter i have one of those little old uh, harbor freight big red multimeters and uh, my mentor Brendan, he said, no, no, let's go ahead and send you an extra capacitor checker that I have. And I'll just charge you the cost of shipping it to you. And, you know, Brendan's the kind of guy, you know, uh, you just don't say no. <laughs> He's not going to give up until he gets his way. He's one of those types, you know. Of course, I'm not that way. Right. <laughs> Well, the package came in today. Let's see what he sent. Well, the package arrived in real good shape. It's not all busted and bent and damaged and torn and ripped, you know, which is pretty much traditional for our postal department. But I will say lately, they've been doing a pretty good job. Let me get this light out of the way. 
I haven't had too much breakage lately. Wow, take a look at that baby. This thing is in pristine condition. Well, Brendan told me it was in great shape, but I didn't think it'd be in this good a shape. Holy mackerel. It's a Sprague Telemike T04 cap resistor analyzer. Man, or cap resistance uh, analyzer. It tests both resistance on a capacitor, which is for the lower value caps, and it tests current leakage for your electrolytics. Well, man, get this, get this baby out of there. I'm, I'm really intrigued now. Boy, I'll tell you what, this baby is nice. This is in, oh man, I don't think I've seen, the last time I saw something like this was when I bought my uh, signal generator. That great big old black signal generator was in the same condition as this. Holy mackerel, even the leather handle's in good shape. Look at that. All right. Now I have, I have already downloaded the instructions on how to use this thing. Now Art Hollingsworth, he has the T05. This is the earlier model, the T04, and it has a uh, it has one of those cat eye deals, those green cat eye deals there. It's the eye glows only when using buttons D to G. Well, that's pretty slick right there. That is really nice. All right, let's test these two tubes. Uh, this is the 6AX4. As I said, you know, previously, I've uh, tested these tubes, and they tested great. So we're going to do it one more time. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and watch the meter. Now this is a rectifier, and what we're looking for, if I can get a nice little focus here, there we go. We're looking for the needle to come over here where it says rectifier OK. First thing I'm going to do is run it through its paces over here with the short leakage test and uh, see if we get any problems at all. nothing happening okay which is great all right now we're back into the value position and we'll go ahead and pull our our value lever down to value and we hope to get the needle go up here to rectifier okay or you know somewhere close to this line on the left the vertical line there or or over to the right oh very good that's very good now i'm going to hold this lever down see if that needle quivers or wavers jitters around or anything like that well, solid as a rock nothing going on all right we're going to call that one good let's move on to the next one all right this is our next tube it's the horizontal output tube it requires the plate cap be connected to the uh, tester uh, on this particular tester i've got a plate cap connector i've got a cathode uh, cap connector right there and a grid cap connector over here depending on the tube and they all you know depending on what it's called for in this chart down here or in this uh, supplemental uh, chart that we have here this is a roll chart supplement this supplements this these are tubes I guess that either were before or after the machine was made and they wanted to make sure they were also included Anyway, we got everything hooked up, the horizontal output tube, all we have to do is run it through its paces. Let's run it through these switch. All, I'm going to switch it for all the way around. Get a little focus here, make life a little easier for you. I'm going to run it all the way around to each of these plate positions, uh, the grid positions plate, and see if it has a heater cathode short. Then we watch the needle when we do this. Here we go. No movement. Good to go. All right, we're now back in the value position. And now I'll pull the value switch. And I'm supposed to read 3.9 to 7.7, .7, which will put me somewhere in this range when I pull the value switch. Here we go. Oh yeah, almost uh, about five and a half. That's pretty good. Not bad, we'll hold it for a few more seconds to see if it quivers or wavers or does anything else. Nope. She's not moving at all. All right, I think we're good to go on that one. Well, since the old tubes test good, we all know what that means. We're going to have to go to the yoke here and test this. Uh, I know the resistor is good. We're going to have to test this uh, capacitor right here. Well, the old yoke is out of the TV, and the capacitor and the resistor that I showed you is inside this black thing right here. I've cut it 
uh, actually I cut it previously to test the resistor and now I really had no way of testing the capacitor so I went ahead and just left it but this time what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and unsolder it here and unsolder it there take the entire thing out the reason being the capacitor checker that Brendan sent me says if you're testing very low capacitors you can't use leads don't be using leads because you'll mess up the reading so I'm gonna to have to connect this thing directly across those uh, terminals on the capacitor checker and I think what I'm gonna do in order to make this job a little easier this sounds to me like it's going to be a job for the old hackle FR300. I'm going to go ahead and extract the solder here, extract the solder here. Be very, very careful of messing around this horizontal deflection yoke. And hopefully I'll be able to get them off. And uh, I might be able to connect. You, and these leads are very tiny, very small, as you can see down in there. Let me zoom down in here. They, they really, they really, when they put this thing together, they put little tiny, just a little tiny stub on each side they twisted it together and then soldered it and then I don't know I don't know if I'm going to be able to you know normally I would just say to heck with it just get rid of it and put another one in but you know since I have the capacitor checker I'm not sure it's going to be able to tell us if this thing is breaking down under high voltage uh, 2000 we're, we're going to find out we're going to be testing both the capacitance and the resistance of it okay so let's see if I can get it out and if I do, when I get it out successfully, I'll probably go ahead and end the video because I want to experiment around a little bit with that capacitor checker. I don't want to waste you all's time, you know, trying to figure out how to do it while you're watching. Forget all that. I've kind of got it figured out, but not quite enough that I, I want to waste everyone's time. I'll probably come back with the next video and uh, we'll go through that thing, you know, lickety split because I, I hope to know quite a bit by that time. So let's see if I can unsolder these two things and get this thing out uh, in one piece. All right, she came out pretty good. Uh, it wasn't easy though. It came out in one piece. And uh, the terminals are still in very, very good condition. I made sure not to, not to ruin anything. This one here on the right. This one here on the left. I just got done cleaning them both up with alcohol. And uh, sure enough, you know, just like any other wire or component at the factory, they wrap this thing around and around the, uh, the terminal post there, making it, yeah, it took a lot, you know, let, let me put it to you this way, guys. I have a lot of experience in soldering. I've even been to a good soldering school. And if you don't have any kind of training or lots of years of experience or you don't have a whole lot of patience, don't attempt something like this, okay? Get someone to help you. You can easily ruin the terminal strip here, that the, right here, or you can easily ruin uh, one of the wire windings uh, in the process of trying to get this out, especially with those uh, leads wrapped around the terminal. They had it wrapped all the way around one time. It's difficult to get off. If you don't have exactly or close to the right tools, you can really have a problem. So if you're not experienced, get some help. You muff up one of these yokes because you ran out of patience or thought you could do something and you really couldn't. You know, you're, you're dead in the water. What, what are you going to do? Especially if it's a rare television, you know. This one's not that rare, but it's rare enough that I didn't want to take any chances. This is kind of a last resort thing right here. Okay, uh, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, study on that capacitor checker. And we'll start out the next video with this thing connected to the tester. And we'll check the capacitance and the resistance uh, of that cap right there. Okay? So until next time, this is John.